So I'm pleased to be here to speak about uh, display support in embedded systems. So it's really a high-level tour of implementation and limitations and how do we display stuff on embedded systems. So first, uh, for the one who you know, don't know me, I'm part of Linaro for one year. So I'm part of a Qualcomm learning team. I do, I do uh, upstreaming for Qualcomm uh, platforms mainly and uh, maintain the old and current platforms. I uh, also maintain uh, other pieces of uh, Linux software and U-Boot software, so mainly uh, AM AMLogic SOCs, U-Boot, uh, uh, Clock, Spin Call, Serial CEC, and part of the DRM uh, stuff with Bridge Panel and uh, the AMLogic uh, Display Driver. And I was a uh, maintainer of the defunct OX NAS platform, which is dead for the disk release. So, um, I'm pretty active on the main list, and uh, it's great. So, uh, first, uh, I need to introduce uh, Linaro. I don't know if everyone knows Linaro, but uh, it's mainly a collaboration between businesses and uh, open source communities to help uh, members to achieve their goals. Uh, so there is one part where members pay to actually deploy and make it easier to make business with ARM platforms. And uh, there is uh, developer sub services where they use uh, all the work that's been done for the last, last 10 years to make ARM work well all everywhere to make actual products in security in, uh, and uh, in CI and make it work uh, in products. So uh, this is a map of uh, the members and the memberships uh, Linaro has uh, today. So uh, the agenda of uh, my talk is mainly about uh, the, the display engine architecture, the protocol limitations, and uh, awareness of the standards and the specifications that are behind, behind payrolls. So it's not a DRM talk, I'm sorry. <laughs> There's plenty of great DRM talks you can find. Uh, by Geert, uh, Boris, or Maxim, and plenty of others. Uh, it's not ever about GPUs, because for me, GPUs is really a separate system uh, that does rendering in memory, and the display engine actually reads his, his memory, so it's really separate hardware. So it's not the case on PCs on in the Intel world, but embedded, it's completely separate. So let's talk, uh, start with a pixel journey, so uh, from the beginning. So let's, let's, let's see our little pixel in its in the memory, so uh, from a picture everybody knows. Uh, it gets read by the display engine in memory. In fact, it's read by in the, in the same world uh, with its friend. Uh, it gets tweaked, uh, color corrected, some of them merge or scaled. Um, and then it gets put into all this uh, timing stuff uh, the display actually needs to synchronize. And then uh, it gets into the display port or whatever protocol uh, packets. So uh, an example of uh, really complex stuff about uh, DVI, JME, uh, DSI, or display port and goes into analog mode in the different part, different differential uh, cables, and then goes onto the display. This is basically uh, the lifetime of a, of a pixel, uh, from the beginning to the end. So, a little glossary first, uh, for people who are not actually uh, aware of all the naming we have in the DRM world. So the DRM, DRM is uh, where we implement all the um, GPU and display drivers. It is a modern, the, the now way to implement display on Linux. So it's direct rendering manager. So it was initially for GPUs. Now it's for GPUs, display, even now acceleration, uh, acceleration for AA, for example. So the term plane, it weird, but it's basically layers layers of pictures we actually blend and scale to have a final picture on the, on, the, on the monitor. So the term source and sync is really used a lot in the video and graphics uh, area. So it's basically the emitter of the display and the receiver of the display. The timings, the timings is what difference, difference a picture 
to a transmission between the source and the sink, it's actually the picture and all the data used to synchronize the source and the sink. And the packets in the display world is really the minimal group of bits that the display protocol used to transmit the data. And the term lanes, because the lanes is interesting because in the new display um, protocols, you don't have any more uh, the parallel display like v VGA or RGB. Uh, you actually have different, uh, di a different set of physical wires where you transmit packets similar in a similar way. So it's also used in PCI Express, for example, because there is the same underground technology. So let's talk about display engines architectures. So we we've seen how a pixel is taken from memory to, to send to to, uh, to a monitor. So it's, let's do the same. So first you have a memory reader, which reads from memory. Uh, you have these planes blending. You take different layers and you blend them. You scale, you change the size to have a final picture. Uh, you fit in it's uh, with the timings. We call it a timing generator or with a plenty of names depending on the SOC. And you come you put it in the protocol, so we call it a transceiver uh, because it takes timings, it generates digital data to be transmitted. And the phi where you actually convert the digital data into analog data to be to be transmitted into into wire wires. So in DRM or Linux system, we have equivalent subsystems or namings. So for example, for everything related to memory management, in DRM we, it's GEM. So there, there is another uh, memory manager called TTM, which was used in, in all the platforms, Intel platforms, and uh, so today's. Man uh, memory manager is GEM. We use it. We use it in GPUs and in uh, display drivers. Um, for planes, we used to have different plane types. Now we have a single universal planes, which f fits every single plane type on any SOC any hardware. Um, we used to call the the, the fact of actually taking the plane and putting it in a single picture in memory in, a, in hardware CRTC. The CRTC comes from the early, really old TV uh, namings, which is uh, now completely outdated. Uh, the hardware that actually does the timing generation, we call it the encoder. Even if now we, we simply move the encoder to a bridge, because now, in DRM, we, we can actually plug uh, plenty of bridges between the actual um, final blending of the image and the actual uh, receiver of the of the of the of the image on the monitor. For example, you can have um, a DSI output which transforms into display port. And on the DisplayPort port, you can have a DisplayPort to HDMI. So all, all these are bridge, and it's doable today in DRM because we made it modular and uh, easy, easy to, to implement. And the file system uh, is not part of DRM, and often the file handling is in bridges. So it's not something which is uh, done everywhere. So for example, if you imagine uh, uh, an ideal system or multi-head system, basically. This is how it looks like. So sometimes the planes are uh, dedicated to CRTCs, like uh, on Intel platforms, but it that can be completely shared among all the CRTCs, like on Qualcomm platforms. You have like uh, 10 planes, you can put it, move it, blend it on, with any CRTC, and uh, show it on any encoder, for example. So it depends, each platform is really different. So, for example, I, I, I took uh, the diagrams of the platform I found because finding actual diagrams of SOC uh, display engine is hard. Honestly, uh, finding documentation is hard and uh, 
correct diagrams is harder. So this is a simplified display engine. So I have the actual real diagram, but I cannot share it. So basically, the Qualcomm um, architecture is really modular and can adapt to uh, to plenty of, uh, of, use, of use cases. So this is an old platform. Uh, for example, uh, the IMX 8M Plus, basically, uh, it's different LCD in uh, interfaces. So it's really basic, basic. You don't have the power of plenty of planes shared. You can uh, move to any CRTC you know, on any heads. Here, you cannot uh, share the planes between the three interfaces, for example. And like for the all winner, for example, they have a basic uh, plane mixing in the uh, TU DU2 that can uh, output to two uh, outputs, like TCON0, TCON1, and can address LVDS, DSI, and HDMI. And uh, for example, HDMI, uh, I'm logic. So I did this diagram, which is bad. I'm sorry. But <laughs> <laughs> Basically, uh, it's to show that every SOC is very different. You have a large variety of architecture, and it's hard to accommodate to actually what's in the SOC. So the most documented I ever found is the STM32. They have a very basic but a very well documented uh, display uh, display engine. This is the display engine is the STM32, uh, which has an ARM uh, ARM V7. And for example, it only addresses DSI, for example. Uh, so let's speak about uh, display prot protocols because, because everything which is, which is before the encoder is not part of the display protocol. It prepares the pixels and they need to be transport transformed and sent onto the wires. So uh, let's speak about the most common display platform. So the most common is HDMI today. HDMI is basically DVI, DVI digital. Do you remember the, the big cables with different cables, but for only analog, only digital, on both, or whatever, it was, it was uh, lame. And they had double link DVI because uh, you couldn't put enough bandwidth on one link. And HDMI is basically a single link DVI, but we managed to, to put up to 4K, 120 hertz on it. And on top of DVI, we added uh, some signalings because DVI is too basic. Uh, the monitor needs to figure out the mode. You send some pixels and the monitor, the monitor say, oh, I need to figure out, is it uh, SVGA or whatever? So since HDMI was designed for TVs, mainly for digital TV, they added some AV info frames, some other frames into the stream, into the sync part of the of the of the timings, to actually send information to the TV. Say this is this, this format, is this, this type of content, is this mode, this format of audio in synchronous now, etc., etc. And they added plenty of new, uh, plenty uh, two new uh, signals, which is a CEC bus which is, in fact, a very old protocol from, from um, Philips that has been integrated in HDMI. That, and we can communicate, every single HDMI client can communicate with each other. So a set-top box can communicate with the TV and another set-top box to negotiate who wants to be on the, uh, uh, showed on the TV, for example. And um, audio origin channel, it's a, a good way to actually get the audio that is uh, output it on the TV to a uh, receiver. So it solves the, the issue of having plenty of cables there behind the TV for audio. So um, the other really uh, major protocol, which is uh, which was, which is uh, younger than HDM, HDMI, is DisplayPort. So today we have we have a DisplayPort everywhere because uh, we dropped all the VGI stuff for a long time. So DisplayPort is the new VESA implementation, and it replaced this VGI entirely. DisplayPort is very modern. So unlike HDMI, which is basically old, old uh, DVI timings you, you put onto, uh, onto uh, um, wires, DisplayPort is actually packetized data. So 
all the display it cut into bits with IDs and addresses and, and you can actually merge multiple streams with audio you can transmit uh, USB on the aux channel you can uh, communicate in uh, both both ways with the display and it's really extensible um, you can go up to uh, 20 gigabits per lane for the last LDP uh, and it's used primarily on the USB-C alt mode which now is in every phone including the Apple one and today it's the main usage for the DP for the panels on laptop today every laptop uses EDP instead of LVDS or all the protocols so MIPI DSI, MIPI DSI is the most used protocol to drive a panel on a phone, on a tablet, for example, for small devices, uh, not much on, on laptops. So it, it operates on top of uh, MIPI, MIPI DeFi. So all these names are complex. Nobody knows what is a DeFi and a CeFi. Even nobody knows what is DSI2 and DSI1. So it's just DSI. So uh, the main point is I use a bus which is uh, goes in two ways. So DeFi is a bus, is a layer. It's used in for display and camera. And you simply it simply configures the bus and the controller simply either sends data or receives data. So it's and it's complex, it's not well documented, so it's hard to know. But there is plenty of features available in DSI. The new panel support, like the high-end phones uh, support, but we cannot implement it upstream because we have no documentation on the panel and on the, uh, the, on the protocol. Uh, another protocol which is less and less used is LVDS. So, so the term LVDS, in fact, only the signaling only the way to take the parallel data and put it on serial, serialize it uh, on the wires. So the actual protocol is on top is FDB, FDPD link, but in the Linux world, we are almost used LVDS, for example. It was mainly used, used for laptop, but now EDP replaced it. There's plenty of other protocols, that are very old protocol, like composite, SVDO, components, cart, or VGA or MIPI DPI. These are all protocols we almost not, no, don't use anymore on no, uh, modern product. And they're very specific products used on TV, for example, like uh, V by one or OpenLDI. Open These autoscope, they are not implemented in kernel because there are absolutely no use case uh, from vendors to uh, upstream these. So, on these protocols, there are plenty of limitations uh, we don't support because uh, for plenty of reasons. So for example, for HDMI 1.4, which is quite old, okay, there's plenty of stuff we don't support in Linux. So, for example, uh, content type, Intel supports it, but it's only uh, support of it. We don't support all the extended co color spaces, and the HDMI 2 is the worst. There's a, a long list of, of features we don't use at all. And all the new TVs you buy today support all this. And in upstream, we don't support them because spec are closed. We cannot implement them at all. Because we had leaks of uh, uh, all the HDMI uh, spec, but there is no way to access these features. And often the SOC don't support this feature at all. So. It's a, it's a shame. Uh, for DisplayPort, it's much better because uh, uh, mainly Intel supports mostly all of the features, for example, of uh, DP of uh, PD2. But there's a, lit, a few SOCs that support DP, uh, DB2. I think the new Qualcomm one supported, but we don't support it in upstream. And uh, for example, all the USB-C alt mode. It's supported by Intel and AMD, and uh, only Qualcomm supported. Uh, this laptop supports it in theory, but there is nobody working on it, or slowly. And uh, but there, there is a catch-up from embedded platforms. Uh, but the same situation: the spec is closed. 
So MIPI DSI is the worst. So MIPI DSI is really used everywhere on all small platforms. Uh, but we implemented the very really basically because we have no idea how the panel works. There is almost no documentation on the no features. So, and basically, we are stuck with init tables that provided by the panel vendor or by the, the we get from the actual uh, implementation of the vendor. Uh, we have very limited data on the SOC documentation. Even, even the best documented uh, DSA host, like the STM32, is really limited. And we simply send all these values. We send the display and it works and we have no idea why it works and we have no idea why it doesn't work. And it's worst. We, we have plenty of situations so we have no idea why we don't have the correct uh, uh, data on the DSA panel. And there's great uh, features we could support on the modern SOCs, like the panel self-refresh, for example, or when your SOC stop uh, updating the, the screen, you set the panel to auto-refresh and you power down everything. So these kind of features would be helpful on, on for example, for laptops or phones, but we can't support it today because we don't have the specs, we don't have the hardware, we don't have the documentation of the hardware. So, um, so, and the, the issue is mostly uh, vendor, drive, vendor uh, source don't even use DRM, so we need to invent the DRM architecture for uh, some SOCs. Um, and like shared IPs, like the Synopsys DSI host or the Synopsys HDMI uh, transceiver, can be a great idea because, oh great, it's HDMI for free, but we implement only the basic support because we don't even know how the IP is configured, we don't know the IP uh, version, we don't uh, know what the feature supported on this SOC and this SOC. So we only support the basic basic and it's hard to actually support advanced feature on any uh, protocol. So the standard paywall, so this is the biggest issue because they absolutely no way, no special way to get the specification as an open source developer and a DRM maintainer, for example, as a DRM bridge and DRM panel maintainer. I should maybe have a way to have documentation and specifications of, of DSI, DisplayPort, or HDMI, so we can implement it correctly. And even worse, we don't have the hardware to validate the implementation. Because vendors, when they make a product, if they want to have the HDMI stamp on it or display port stamp, they need to pass the conformance test. Today, on the mainline DRM, only Intel and AMD does that. No other implementation has it. So Google did does it. When Google does a Chromebook, based on mainline, on MediaTek, Qualcomm, or another, they pass all the conformance, but they only conform on their fork, not on the mainline. So it's hard, and we miss a lot of new features, a lot, a lot of modern features, because of that. So the costs are huge, so as a, as a contributor, I cannot afford an HDMI license, adopter license, or the DisplayPort uh, uh, license, and even worse, I can't afford a MIPI Alliance membership to implement correctly the, the panel support. So, so in conclusion, the, it's very heterogeneous. Uh, every single SOC is really, really different. They really target their SOC for specific use cases, like the phone SOCs or the set top box SOCs don't have at all the same specific or the same characteristics. They don't have the same way to uh, color correct the planes, to merge the planes, to scale the planes. Scaling is different. You don't scale the same on the set-top box and on the phone, for example, because you don't have the same quality requested, uh, the same uh, or on a laptop or industrial device. Industrial devices associated are really simple. Basically, you don't have plenty of planes because you only need to show simpler stuff. 
you don't have a, a, a complex uh, scaling. And um, the biggest problem with uh, graphics, it, it's impossible to define, to, to say to user space, like uh, a compositor, what the hardware is capable to, uh, for. So for example, the a wine on a wine on compositor will try. It will try to use plenty of planes. If it can't, it will reduce, 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 and try to composite in software or in GPU and use one plane, for example. So display support is a hard, uh, hard word, so uh, it's complex. And uh, if uh, the vendor uh, uh, had a good documentation and we had access for uh, maintainers and developers to the IP specifications and to the protocol specs, it would make life much easier for everyone. And uh, it's the end. Thank you <laughs> for listening. Kevin? So what do you think could be done to get open source developers access to, the, to those specifications? Uh, maybe uh, an open source instance like uh, Free Software Foundation or Linux Foundation could probably help to sign NDAs and negotiate uh, specs access. Don't know. Maybe free desktop. Don't know. Don't, uh, don't, uh, I never don't know if it has been attempted before, but it would be great to uh, do it. I, if I recall correctly, the Xong Foundation has done something like that for the display port spec, uh, but to my knowledge, not for the DSI and NAGMA specifications. So maybe it would be worth trying to, uh, to push through well, as many different channels as we can, uh, because if it can be done for display port, I would assume there's some uh, hope yeah. for the future. Probably. Uh, thanks for the talk. I guess I will ask you some question about the uh, IP documentation. Um, what do you think we can do? Um, is there hope that, um, especially like with ARM, where IPs are reused and, and so on and so on, um, could we have some sort of um, talk with these IP makers to kind of directly have them provide this documentation to developers? Um, yeah, do, do, do you think we can do things um, similarly? Um, do, do you, um, I mean, have you tried talking to them, for instance? Um, what do you think is the general attitude towards that? Because now I think in many cases, the open source implementations are the de facto standard that their customers will use. So it kind of feels like there is a, a culture barrier or something that kind of prevents them from releasing those proper, nice documentations. Uh, what, what can we do there? So yeah, I think it's variable. Because for example, Cadence, uh, does uh, the upstream themselves or help with bootlin so uh, they implement fully the IP so I think it's different for vendors so I think the main issue is synopsis and synopsis has yes. huge deal with SOC vendors and they simply don't care about upstream at all so I know they have, maintain they have maintainers they have people in synopsis that can contribute but they don't care at all about the support in upstream so perhaps with the HDMI forum and the MIP Alliance, we could probably speak to them, explain. Yeah, it could be doable, I think, because they have license, license to, act, to produce the IP. So it could be Thanks. attempted. Yeah, there is actually a great uh, cultural barrier here because uh, if you put something in the silicon, first if it's uh, an IP from um, uh, from an IP vendor, uh, you can't you can't distribute the the documentation to you or to your customers because the synopsis doesn't want you to. <laughs> and then there is also uh, an issue. Uh, 
each time you document something, you expect uh, someone to, to try to use it and it makes some support requests and the, there is actually a strategy to, to limit what is documented to avoid to have support requests in, the, in uh, silicon companies. And it's a bit frustrating when, even when you, you have the, the product done to the RTL and uh, uh, when you write the driver, you you uh, you are asked to let something uh, obscure to just avoid some uh, some question on this. Yeah, I understand. No, I wasn't uh, IP design, so <laughs> all this. But yeah, I think it's also a question of time because some vendors want to upstream, but the effort is too big uh, to follow Intel, for example. So it's a complex situation. Yeah. So thank you for listening. <laughs>